Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Self-Publishing Podcast. I'm with my good friend, Dr. Jessica Drummond. She is the founder and CEO of Integrated Women's Health Institute. She's over two decades of experience in women's health. She's an international speaker. She is the author of Nutrition for Relieving Pelvic Pain, uh, Clinicians to Coach, and Outsmart Endometriosis. Jessica, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks so much for having me. It's my pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's been a while since we've been able to talk on on Zoom and, and definitely in person. So it's it's always fun to catch up with you and, and see what's going on. But um, you know, first, yeah. just just kind of tell us a little bit about uh, more about yourself and and what you do and why you do it. Well, we ha- I I run one company that that basically has two uh, missions. The first is that we have an educational company. I've been running that since 2009, actually both really since 2009. Um, And we train women's health and wellness professionals to become health coaches or people who want to be in health coaching with a focus on a niche market in women's health. And we do continuing education in all kinds of clinical training in women's health and health coaching training in women's health, functional nutrition, sleep medicine, lifestyle medicine, mindfulness for all kinds of things, pelvic pain, menstrual health, female athletes, um, perimenopause, osteoporosis across the gamut. And we do business coaching for people who want to develop clinics that are usually either telehealth or a hybrid of telehealth and, you know, uh, in-person practice that focuses again on women's health, but we focus on developing niche practices so people can work with clients anywhere in the world from a health coaching mindset. Absolutely. I love that. And, and obviously I, I know you very well. And I, I think this is the second or third time I've interviewed you for different podcasts. So I know all that, but I want the you know listeners to know where we're coming from. And, and so we're going to talk about, you wrote three books, but really before you ever wrote a book, you were super successful speaking all over the world and, and things like that. Um, is, is that, that's, I'm saying that right. Correct. Yeah. And, you know, and the other thing that the company does that I've been doing also since the beginning is, well, we we have a health coaching program ourselves, specifically right. for people with endometriosis and pelvic pain. And we also work some with perimenopause and other hormonal issues, a little bit of long COVID now, because I'm yeah. getting to live that wonderful yeah. experience. Um, but before that, I was a physical therapy clinician and nutritionist for like, Ten, more than 10 years before that. So I've done, I've, I'm, I've stayed clinical my entire career, which I think informs everything I do. And I think for all, a lot of your listeners, um, you know, their books are about helping people heal sure. and it's really a wonderful first step to that whole experience. And, and for some people, it's their, maybe going to be their only experience with you. You know, I have had right. a few people who read our outsmart endo, my outsmart endometriosis book, and they didn't need me as a clinician. That's super, super rare, like 0.0001%. Right. But I'm happy when that happens. Like, I'm grateful that I don't know, 20, 30,000 people have read that book or have, have experienced that book. We'll talk about the fact that they yeah. probably didn't read it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the, the book is, is an, a useful transition or I guess introduction to the fact that it's part of the healing experience when we're working on chronic health issues or it's part of the life experience if your book is about something else like clinician to coach, which obviously has a different goal. Yeah. I love that. I love that you said, you know, there's going to be a small percentage that just read the book and that's their only introduction or interaction with you because um, you know, one of the things that I I just talked about yesterday on a podcast, and I don't know if it'll be yesterday as, as these are being rolling, rolling out, but um, is, is the book should give all the secrets, but a lot of times people need more guidance. And so they do come alongside of you and, and work with you. And that's whether you're in healthcare or plumbing or electrician or whatever it is, like, you know, I may read a book on how to wire a plug, but I don't want to do it because I don't want to take the chance of being electrocuted. So I go ahead and find the expert and let them do it. hundred percent. This is what, this is literally the exact metaphor that I use with our students all the time, because I sell them, look, almost everything you're going to write in your clinical 
book, someone could find somewhere like you're, yes. you didn't make this up out of nowhere. Right. Yeah. And yet, <coughs> um, same thing. If I were going to renovate my bathroom, there are ways to do that by going on YouTube yeah. or reading someone's book. I would never do that because I would be afraid that my house would flood <laughs> or yeah. I would put the wrong kind of tile up or something. Right? right. I have no idea how to do that. And we don't think of it that way because this is a topic that we're really immersed in and yes. comfortable with. So we think people are just going to read it and do it. They're not, they're going to get stuck in the exact same way. Like there could be step-by-step -step instructions and you're still not going to wire that thing because you don't yeah. want to catch anything on fire. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And matter of fact, in PT school, we wired a ceiling fan and when we turned it on, the whole room lit up with a purple flame. Um, and we turned the light <laughs> off and turned it back on and we never rewired it again. So uh, hopefully that, that wasn't a trailer in a trailer park in St. Augustine, Florida. So hopefully that trailer's still standing. If it isn't, I'm sorry to whoever. Um, anyway, so yeah, it's best to get the experts to do it. Oh man. I yeah. haven't thought about that in a long time, Jessica. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so anyway, so you had your super successful coaching business and, and I, and I know people here locally in Louisiana, I have a good friend that went through your course, um, Lisa Arendale. And then I know people globally that have done it. So I know it, you have a great company and great coaching. So wrote the books. And then you did something really cool with outsmarting endometriosis. I think you you sold a course or something before the book ever came out. Let's kind of walk us through that a little bit. Yeah. So with outsmart endometriosis, so I talk about business model a lot when we do training because you have to be really deliberate about what your business model is. Otherwise, you can get very scattered because the marketing is very different for different business models. So before I wrote Outsmart Endometriosis, I had been working with clients with endometriosis for probably like 17, 18 years. And we had tested group coaching program models. We had tested sort of DIY coaching models. Um, I had worked privately with people. I've worked in the clinic with people as a physical therapist. And for the kinds of clients that we were getting in our practice were very complex cases of endometriosis. Now we still have a systematic approach of sort of a structure that we help people go through, but um, we do it privately one-on-one -on -one. and, but it's still a coaching program, really. It's just one person at a time through it. So the book is literally the exact structure that we use to take people through our private coaching program. And, you know, obviously we find, we personalize it to them because we can do specific lab testing right. or can look at their specific history. We can look at their genetics. We can look at, you know, their whole uh, health history. Sure. Um, but what, what I did before I even released the book is that we invited people to join that health coaching program. Well, really I invited them to, meet with me on a strategy call to see if they were a good fit. I'm very specific about making sure we choose the right people to work with. Some people are just not going to succeed in our program for any number of reasons. We might not be able to help some people, you know, there's some issues that, we, that we're not the right fit for. Uh, some people, it's not the right time. They first have right. to do something else. So for, especially for private consulting, coaching, clinical work, whatever you're set up to do, if you're doing very deep work. And actually I strongly recommend you do this too, even if you're doing a group coaching program, because you don't want the group dynamics to be out of whack by yes. someone who is not a good fit. And there's no right or wrong about that. There are just some people who are not a good fit or it's not the right time or whatever. Sure. And which is great. I mean, there, there are 178 million people that have endometriosis right now. There's no way I'm ever going to be able to help all of them individually, which is another reason to write the book, because there are probably somebody else out there who could help them, but need my insight. So yeah. wonderful. I hope that person read the book. So, so anyway, when I was releasing the book, I said, that if you want to talk, we'll give you a free copy of the book. And if you'd like to talk with me directly about helping you relieve your endometriosis symptoms, get on a call. So I sent that out to our email list and, you know, on our social media platforms and things like that. 
And that first two weeks when I launched the book before it was even fully edited, I think um, it was in like an ebook, you know, almost final draft version, sure. but it wasn't even fully done. And um, I did 65 calls that the next two weeks. And cause I had to take a train back. I was at my publisher and um, you know, it, I took a train to that meeting. This was before COVID. And so I had like a four hour train ride home and I just connected with every single person I could connect with that might want to, that was already in my universe somewhere that might want to, to consider having us actually at the time it was just me. I didn't have a team yet to do this, to work with them, you know, to, to resolve their endometriosis symptoms. And like I said, I had like 65 calls and, you know, something like 30 or 25 clients within the first couple of weeks before the book even came out. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> I love yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and I mean, I know that was a lot of work to do 65 calls in two weeks on top of being a mom and, and, a, and, a, and a wife and, and a business owner and, and all this stuff. But I mean, that was huge. I mean, oh yeah, that was huge because it really, it did a couple of things that I think are really important. One, it, it required me to really know my material very well. And it also required me to really become a good listener of potential clients to see who would be a good fit and then practice, practice, practice. It, it, it just gave me an immersion of practice and first with determining who would be a good fit and, you know, inviting them to the program, but also doing the program over and over and over and over. And I did it so much so fast in that initial time frame that then I was able to hire a team. So the book released, was it January of 2020? It must have been January of 2020. And I was going to essentially open this like digital endometriosis practice. And then of course, March 2020 happened. And I was like, right. eh, we won't add a new business line and let's yeah. figure out what the heck's going to happen. But the demand was so high that I ended up doing it anyway around May. And I hired like six health coaches and an, another nutritionist, naturopathic physician who works with me. And essentially, and someone I hired, one of the health coaches also coordinates that program. And now essentially that's, it's entirely run by other people. I still do intakes and I still am on meetings every week to make sure everyone's moving along. And, you know, I jump in when there's any troubleshooting to be done, but I was able to really teach it and leverage it with other people because I had such a clear method by then. Now, you know, I've been creating this method for 10 years before that. Right. Um, I even published some research when I was in my graduate program for nutrition and like, it wasn't like I just created this out of thin air and all of my clinical experience, you know, led up to the book. But the great thing about that is even if you don't have a decade of clinical experience, if you've got two or three years of really focused experience, you can then create a program the trick is you've got to get it out of your head. And for me, that's what the book really did. Cause you can't teach it to other people, you know, and I had trained people in this, but not in such a clear, like, here's the method way. Right. And when you write a book, you, you have to do that. Cause you've got to make some decisions about what's in the method and what's not in the method for the book. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that you say, hey, we're, we, we don't have to wait 10 years to do this. We just need to have some focused energy on, on one area and, and then move forward. And, and I love that because I think people that say wait till you've been doing this 20 years or 10 years are, are absolutely ridiculous. Um, so I know you're super busy. How did you take time to, to actually sit down and write the book? Did you write it out? Did you type it? Did you dictate it? How did you do that? Um, so I actually wrote the book before I even met my publisher. I just kind of made a decision at one point. I'm not sure exactly. It was sort of like, I was planning to just write it just to kind of like, I felt like I had to put it out somewhere. <laughs> you know, there comes yeah. a point where you're like, people have asked you to write a book for 17 years and you're like, okay, fine. And yeah. so I wrote that book, just sitting down and writing at my parents' house for like, I, it took me about a month 
Um, and it was a well, it was a well-researched book and that sort of thing. Um, but then the final kind of putting it in, in a good usable format and having it edited and all that, and that took, you know, a total of maybe two or three months, something like right. that. It's not actually a long process once you actually sit down to do it. My second yeah. book, uh, well, my third book, technically my first book, honestly, I didn't even write it. It was, it was transcribed yeah. from hundreds of my lectures from years yeah. before. And then I just edited it. Yeah, um, awesome. The second book I sat down and wrote and researched more like you would write a paper or something like sure. that. Right. And writing stories. My third book, I, I wrote by almost dictation because it's less a book that requires evidence-based research, more experiential. There's some research support, but it's a business education book. So it's more right. experiential. So I used a, a little tool called otter.ai and I literally just talked to my computer for a while and then edited that. Um, so yeah. Any, I love it. Any, there's lots of ways to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love that. And, it, and it's funny. I see you know, there's like a little bit of, I don't want to say this, that I didn't write the, you know, the first one you'd had it all transcribed, but no, I mean, there's, you had years of lectures to go on. Like, why would you sit down and rewrite all this stuff? You've already said it all. So I, I love that because I think a lot of people are hung up, especially people that are like you and I that have a ton of content. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I've, at this point I've recorded over 250 podcasts like mm -hmm. there's no sense in going back and trying to rewrite everything. Just put all that stuff in a book and, and you can edit it, like you said. Um, yeah. And then then there's Otter. And, and I, I used to use Otter. Now I use Descript. I, I like it. It's a little bit easier for me to use. But same thing. You just speak and then it spits it out and you edit it. And it takes the fraction of the time. Um, but you do have to take action, which is what you did and say, hey, OK, it's time to sit down and write this. So I like that. You don't you don't get anything without taking action. Absolutely. And and. I do think it doesn't take as long as you would think if you commit to finishing at a certain time. Yes. Um, you know, I, and, and as you said, like you don't have to have a hundred years of experience in your topic. If you have some very targeted, deep experience, I think that's actually more valuable. You know, you can have t one year of experience 20 times, or you can have, yeah three really good years of experience and yeah. you, or you could have your own story that really ties in, or you could have a, you know, a really clear client story that triggers like what needs to be shared. And so that's really what I think is so valuable about a book. It takes your knowledge base, but you're also your framing of it. Because like I said, there's nothing like brand new, everything that you're writing most of the time somebody else has discovered. Yes, yeah. there was like two research papers that I did in graduate school that were relatively novel that are a part of the 80 references in my book, right? <laughs> but everything else was published by someone else before. It's just framed in, in my experience. Yes. And, and so that's what's so valuable about a book. It helps you to create that framing of your own experience through storytelling and then through kind of methodization of your work. Yeah, I love it. You know, one of the one of the things I do for fun, not really, but but I do this is read Amazon reviews on books like, you know, for self-publishing because I'm I'm working on my book and I was literally working on it right before we got on this. And then books about physical therapy or, or healthcare or whatever. And I read the reviews to know where somebody else left something out where I can add. And one of the dumbest reviews I see all the time and it's on just about every book I've ever looked at is I could find all this online for free. Well, absolutely you can, but did you like, so what you can find <laughs> it. everything's online for free, you know? So, yes. it, but it's, it's framed, like you said, in your story from your yeah. mindset and your viewpoint. Um, so, cause I mean, like I said, you and I are both physical therapists. You work with women's health. I do mostly orthopedics and, and we have different mindsets and viewpoints on, on everything from, Color, favorite coloring books to, you know, whatever. Yeah. So it's, it's always going to be framed differently from your viewpoint. I love that. Yeah. And that's a hundred percent true. You can find everything for free online, but generally people don't, it's difficult. You, people find information, you know, like I know a lot about perimenopause and yet it's one of the things I've studied for 
10 years at least. And yet a friend of mine just wrote a book on perimenopause and it's called something like the essential oil menopause solution. Her name is Marisa Snyder. It's a good book. You should get it uh -huh. somewhere. Well, you maybe shouldn't your wife, somewhere. <laughs> <I'll get her. laughs> but your audience. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and, and while I actually do 90% with my clients of what she even mapped out, she had some different stories that were very enlightening. She, I don't really use essential oils. It's not something I'm super familiar with. So that little piece of it, which was sure. just a piece of the book was super valuable to me as like another little clinical pearl. Um, so every time you write, especially these clinical books, you know, the little clinical pearls that no one else has thought of because you just had a different experience from them. You had different things you brought to your work with clients is what makes that book valuable, even if it's not brand new information. And the other thing that I think is important, you know, if we want to talk a little bit about using your book as a, as a mechanism for having people working with you clinically or in your coaching practice, something like 96% of people who purchase books don't read past the first chapter. That's right. <laughs> was, yeah. I'm kind of surprised by it, quite honestly. Um, but it's true. And, and, you know, the more I've been in this world of publishing a few books, I, it's hundred percent true. Like I've yeah. literally either sold or given away something like 20,000 copies of my Outsmart Endometriosis book. I think like four people have read it. And, <laughs> and, so, and what? so, and so what, it's totally fine, but it's a very valuable lead magnet. Uh, if, if you're familiar with kind of getting leads to your practice, it's very valuable because it, it's a very high quality thing. It's, it's seen as substantial, which gives you a level of credibility that's hard to get from any other thing you create, um, especially something that takes as little as less than, you know, six months, yeah. and usually less than four to three, four months. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very high value. So it also helps lead into, you know, I was already a speaker before I published the book, but this gives me even more speaking opportunities because yeah, there's a I'm jumping sure. off place for the, you know, for the, for the interviewers or the, mm -hmm. Uh, conference leaders. Right. And, and then, you know, so it's very powerful in that regard. And I think that when you're, when you're writing a book, it gives you this level of credibility, but then because of the analogy we're talking about earlier with the, you know, redoing your bathroom or rewiring your ceiling fan, people are like, okay, this person knows what they're doing. And, and which is, you really should, like, if you're going to be writing yeah. a book, commit to knowing what you're doing. Like Absolutely. really, you know, I think that's important. Don't just like write a book, like yes. commit to really knowing what you're doing. We, we have a thing at the Inter Integrative Women's Health Institute. We're always talking about like commit to excellence. If you're going to do this, do it, you know? Yes. Um, but assuming you've done that and no matter where you are, even if you still have more to learn, because we all have more to learn, you know, I have 20, 30 more years to learn. I'm never going to learn at all. Um, but then commit to doing that and you then will actually help people go through the method because they always also need you because they're not going to rewire their own ceiling fan. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that. And I, I was about to get to that. So I'm glad you transitioned into that. It It's huge. You know, I've, so you've been doing this about twice the amount of time I have um, as far as your career, but you know, I had never been able to speak anywhere until, um, a couple of years ago. And then after I wrote my first book, like I've been able to speak uh, three or four or five more times. I can't, I don't know exactly, but this, uh, you know, conference in Ireland that uh, women on mm -hmm. fire conference that you're speaking at, I was asked to present about writing books and self-publishing and, and I would have never gotten that had I not written my first book and started doing this. And so it just gives you that bigger level of credibility. Um, and, and that's to me, this just the start. Cause I plan on speaking, you know, many, many, many more times over the next several years, but, um, it's because I have a book and, and really nothing else. I've had, this is, this is my fourth podcast that I've had. And, um, you know, I, I like several different things. And so I'm finally, you know, I've settled on this and um, I have another one about entrepreneurs that, that kind of feeds this as well. But the podcasts, 
don't give you credibility like the book does, even even though they're just as credible and, and you may speak to some amazing people, but that book just sets you apart just a little bit more. Yeah. And, and I really agree with that. I think a well done book that's really clear about what yes. it helps people do um, is, is really the most, the first most valuable lead magnet you should create. Um, it, it'll help you with everything else, whether you're going to have a course or a podcast or be a professional speaker. It, the most important thing that it does beyond that credibility is it gives yourself the confidence to do those other things. Clearly you can do those other things without it. Cause I Absolutely. did a lot of that before, but it's a heck of a lot easier after you've done it because you finally got in your head organized, like, and you feel confident in your method. You feel confident in your work. You have your work written down. So like sometimes I don't remember what salad dressing they're supposed right. to have or whatever. That's right. It's written down. I can just look it up now. That's right. Yeah. I love it. And, and you said the keyword has to be well done. It can't be crap. Um, yeah. Now th there's another saying I say that says my crappy book's better than the book you don't have. And, and that's kind of tongue in cheek, but seriously, yeah. if you're going to write a book, it needs to be well done. It needs to be professional, uh, which is why I transitioned from early on. I used Fiverr for a lot of things. No, now I have a professional team that helps me publish and print and format and edit because you, you don't want Uncle Joe. I would talk to someone yesterday. She said, don't let Uncle Joe edit your book. And I was like, yes, absolutely. Um, Jessica, talk about some ways that you use to promote um, your books, especially the last one. Um, so Clinic to Coach, I'm, I do a lot of things with that. Uh, it's similar, as you said, uh, in terms of speaking on more business podcasts, um, more business education. It's a lead magnet call to action for all of the business training that we do on YouTube and social media. It's a bridge to getting people to actually, you know, work with us and be a part of our business coaching programs. Um, it's a credibility marker. It's, it helps me speak. And then I've actually just started a podcast. It's going to be launched in about a month. And that book and all of the books, so every piece of content that we, every piece of like kind of the sides of the business we're, we'll have seasons associated with them so that there's ways for people, you know, one of the things when you're doing, when you're doing lead collecting from an organic standpoint is to have what, what my assistant calls a, a spider web, like the top end of your lead collection is things in audio, things yes. in print, things in video, things on social media. And so it's, it's a lead magnet. It's a credibility marker to help me do more speaking and podcast interviews. And it also did the same thing in terms of structural organization of our business training program. We have a clear pathway. It helped us really organize and structure that. And we've done a lot of upgrading to our internal teaching systems based on being clearer and clearer about what people need to do. And, and the book gives that level of clarity. Yeah, that's great. That's a, that's a great um, plan right there. And guys, if you're listening, please go back and listen to that again, because Jessica really just broke down exactly how to use your book to, to get more clients in your pipeline and make more money with your business. So Jessica, last thing I want to ask you is, is what would you give, you know, three to five tips to somebody that wants to write a book? What would you, what would you tell them to get started on? I think the first tip is to get super clear about who the book is for, what the problem that the book is designed to solve and think exactly in that metaphor. Is this a book designed to help a physical therapy student rewire a ceiling fan? Like <laughs> get, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> get specific like that. Right. right. Um, and then collect your stories. So if your book is about helping people over, you know, helping people who are rock climbers to overcome knee pain, collect your stories, you know, sit down and think about who are the clients you've worked with in the last one to 20 years. You know, maybe you've seen 50 people with knee pain and who are rock climbers or something very similar collect those stories in your mind and, and start to write them down. And then the third thing I would do is 
think about that methodologically. So where do people, where do you meet someone? What do they look like when they come into your clinic? What are their challenges? What are their concerns? And then what is their outcome after working with you? And then create a skeleton of the steps to get them from A to B. Mm, that is amazing. I love that. And, and obviously I'm writing this down because I want to remember so I can outline this later, but um, man, that's huge. So be super clear about who it's for and what your problem is, what you're going to solve, uh, collect the stories. I love that part. And then think about where they are, what their challenges are, what their outcomes are always all amazing stuff. I really, you know, Jessica, that's so I ask everybody that on the podcast and, and they give, you know, pretty similar answers with a little caveat depending on personality and things, but you're the first person to say collect stories um, out of the first 30 or 40 people that I've interviewed. So I really like that. Cause I think that's an important part because one of the things I like about books, especially even nonfiction books is the author puts a little bit of their story in there and it has to, your, it has to be your personality. I think that comes through with your book. Yeah. And then even if no one reads it, cause they won't, um, yeah. <laughs> you have those stories to use as part of the other stuff that you create that your book ends up being a lead magnet for. So yeah. you can do a Facebook live about one of those stories. You can do an Instagram post about one of those stories. You can do a video interview about one of those stories. And, you know, sometimes we just don't sit back and think about what experience we really do have. And especially if you're newer at this, you know, you're a relatively new grad in your first five years, you know, but you've done a specialized practice or you've worked with even 20 or 30 very similar clients, you have a lot more stories than you think. And what you want to start doing is looking at like what was similar about those experiences and what was my unique take on that? Like, how did I do that differently than any of my professors or just because I'd done it a few times or just because maybe I'm a rock climber and had knee pain, you know, the, your experience and your clinical experience specifically, like what are the little exercises you've rigged up or, you know, the shoes that worked the best or, you know, the weather, how does that impact it? It's those little details that are most interesting and will both inform your book for the people who read it and will inform your content creation once you have a book. And, you know, the other thing is once you have a book, you never again can say you have like nothing to post on social media. You've got like 40,000 words or 20,000 right. words, like take two sentences out of your book and post it. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I, one of the, the, you know, techniques as we talk with uh, my clients is, you know, getting on blog posts and uh, of people who have your ideal client and, you know, more than three people are reading it a month. Um, and I'm like, look, Even you don't have three, to write. It's fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah three. But I'm like, yeah. you don't have to write a blog post. You have a book, you wrote a book. <laughs> take the book and post it on the blog, you know? So, um, I love yeah, that. Take a piece of it. That. You've already take done it. Take a piece of yeah. it. Yeah. You've already done it. You don't have to, let's stop doing double work and let's just take the work we've done and promote it. So, um, lovely. Awesome. Jessica, um, thank you so much for jumping on. Uh, where can people come learn more about you if they want to? The best thing to do is download a free copy of my brand new book, clinician to coach at clinic to coach.com. That's clinic the number two or the word to coach.com. I love it. Jessica, thank you so much for speaking with me today. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Please rate, review, and subscribe. For more inspiring conversations like this one, I invite you to join my free Facebook group, Book Boss Tribe. If you're ready to write your book, I want to invite you to book a free call with me or sign up for my free course. You can get both of those at linktree slash bookboss.